first of all, those of you guys that were not in here yesterday, uh, I'm Kurt Weezy. I've been the head football coach at Minnesota Duluth going on my eighth season and been at, at UMD for 13, and we have had a, a fortunate run of winning a lot of football games um, throughout our last 12 seasons and heading into 13 here. And a lot of the secret to our success is recruiting the right kids. I know I have heard a couple speakers this morning talking about making sure that you, you have the right kids in your football program and that you have them heading in the right direction. And the other secret to us winning a lot of football games is being able to rush the football consistently in the way that we do it and the, the way that we're passionate about it. And we, we are not a, an extremely complex offense. Uh, what we do on paper uh, in this afternoon will seem maybe relatively complex, but when you really break it down, we're running the same run play over and over again and making sure that our perimeter guys are adjusting throughout the play to make things uh, either you know, a little bit more difficult on the defensive side and easier for us to be able to adjust. So um, we're going to talk about the run game today. I know yesterday we talked about a lot of the, the play action possibilities off of some of our run game and a lot of you guys came for questions after that. But um, offensively we are we're going to be multiple personnel wise, we're going to be multiple formation wise, and we're going to be multiple as far as what we're doing on first and second down, but we've always had a philosophy of being good on first and second down, making sure that we're going to stay on schedule. And the, the crux of that uh, statement is being good on first and second down is really the ability to be able to run inside zone. And if there's something we hang our hat on, if you had our players come to us uh, during the off season or on a critical third or fourth down play, and what play do they want for the most part, they're going to ask for some variation uh, of inside zone, which gives us the ability to control the clock, control the ball, and eventually make explosive plays happen through rushing the football. Uh, somebody asked earlier today on what we consider an explosive play and how do we get those. An explosive play for us is really tracked after the game. It's a, a rush of over 15 yards or a pass play of over 25. And again, we're, at, like all of us, we're after the season going to break down what we had done uh, in all three phases of the game and, and trying to make sure that we have the ability to have explosive plays on the offensive side uh, is an important piece. Inside zone for us is um, kind of our bread and butter and it is a complement off of our outside zone play. So this is a, an inside zone or a inside track hitting rush running play that for us, we want to make sure we have the ability to attack the defense vertically off the, the off the line of scrimmage. Outside zone, we'll go down the line of scrimmage laterally. Inside zone, we are going to coach our guys, our offensive linemen, to have their pads square to be able to, to push the defense off the line of scrimmage and be able to penetrate that way. Um, the benefits is it's simple. Uh, the communication is relatively simple. The schematics are relatively simple. The understanding of the game to be able to run inside zone is simple with the ability to be versatile, the ability to be able to adjust really the backside. When we're coaching all of our inside zone stuff, really what happens on the front side of the play, we don't care about. And I'm going to go through that as, as we're talking through kind of what, what we're looking at here. But um, to be able to be versatile really on the backside and adaptation to our personnel, we don't always have, uh, like everybody, the biggest and the strongest offensive lineman um, for our league and for our, for our division, but we do generally attempt to recruit athletic offensive linemen. So a lot of our linemen are leaner, longer offensive linemen that have the ability to, to move laterally, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, it is a, it's a more aggressive run play than like a toss or a sweep or an outside zone, so it, it is a little bit uh, it's less passive, it's interior breaking play, um, and we, can, we, we know how to adjust our zone game to be able to take advantage of what defenses are giving us. So um, if you, the advantage of what we're doing, if we went into a, a game plan meeting on Monday, our players right now today, for the most part, would be able to drop kind of what we're going to do for the run game. So we don't change a lot of this stuff from week to week. Um, so let's start with running this out of the shotgun. I know a lot of you guys are, are doing a lot of this stuff out of the shotgun. Um, so we're going to drop with our first step. 
towards the line of scrimmage, and we're going to square towards towards our read. So depending on what defensive front we are going to uh, go against, for the most part, if I am the quarterback and I'm teaching the quarterbacks, so if we're going to run, my running back is on my left hand side here, and we're going to run inside zone to the right, which will always cut back. We're going to every one of our inside zone plays are going to cut ball, cut back, although we're calling it right the ball will end, always end up back behind the center in some capacity. So I'm going to teach our quarterbacks on this to have the exact same angle that our tailback is going to have. So if we're going to read a defender on the front side of the line of scrimmage, that's where my front foot, my right foot should be so that they can clear this path. If it's more like against an odd defense and I have a, a defender on my center, then my feet may be a little bit more square like this because my running back now won't take the ball front side at all. He's probably going to be right towards my center and going back. So my quarterback's feet, something that I will drill with our guys when I'm, when I'm teaching the quarterbacks, I'm flat out flipping these guys the football and I'm telling them you have a three technique on the front side and they're going to catch and their front foot should go to the quarterback. You have a zero now, my feet should be like this so that my running back can go across my face and our mesh point on this is going to be extremely important. Um, so when we're, when we're doing this, for the most part, if we're not having an RPO, a run pass option on the, off the back side of this, that means we're going to be running zone read, meaning that I'm going to read somebody on the end man or the end of line scrimmage, depending on what front it is, to be able to dictate what he is going to do. If he's going to play our tailback, I became a, a runner, a ball carrier as a quarterback. If he's going to play me or he settles, this is where our tailback ends up getting the football. So, we are very cognizant and we coach our, our tailbacks really hard on this, on how tight those guys will hug the line of scrimmage because the tighter that they can get in the line of scrimmage and bend the ball back, that's less room for the defender, more room for the defender to be able to, to defend, to be able to, to cover up your quarterback. Firm with the football, and this is something that everybody struggles with, younger quarterbacks will struggle with, younger running backs will struggle with. When I open up and I have a, a tailback coming across my, my chest, um, you know, how hard is that ball in his, in his stomach? And so that's why it takes thousands of reps. And we have a, a clip coming up here next where we're flat out flipping the tailback the ball and I'm gonna open up and it's a feel thing for whether or not that ball's gonna be mine or it's going to be yours. And we have had times where the ball's on the ground, but very few with some of our older quarterbacks. Okay, so our tailback steps on this. Uh, we're going to line with our toes past the quarterback's heels. And so, why do we do this? So, if I'm the quarterback and my feet are squared up behind the center, my tailback will be with his toes on my heels right here. And we do that because his steps on this, he's going to drop step and he's going to come downhill. Okay, so he's coming towards the line of scrimmage uh, at, a, at, a, at a pretty good pace. If we're running outside zone, like laterally, Okay, and then my, my tailback's feet are going to be more squared up to mine because I'm going to receive it and I'm really working like this as a quarterback. But this play, we're here, so he's behind me to be able to give this a little bit of time to, to, to set up. The other part of this is if we end up with a bad snap, the ball's high, the ball's low, the ball's of our tailback, this will give him the ability to slow his pace a little bit and the tailbacks need to, to be able to, to time the snap up a little bit as well. Gain ground. Cross with the mesh point with a toe directed uh, right to the aiming point. So uh, we covered that. Same thing with the quarterback. My running back and the quarterback, they need to have the same aiming point. Their eyes need to be in the same spot. And we got to make sure that we're, we're on, uh, on par there with both those guys. Longer second step to square shoulders parallel to line of scrimmage. So our tailbacks in this play will always stay square to the line of scrimmage. So they're going to step laterally and then come down. So their, their shoulders should never be towards the front side of this play because they're going to end up going backside. And this is going to make a little bit more sense as we watch a little bit of film here. Depth of motion is dependent and that's going to be all dependent really on, on what we have, what set we have, what personnel we have in the group and kind of what we're doing off of the backside. So this is a really simple drill that we're going to teach zone read with. You can see the tail back here, his toes are about on our quarterback's heels, his width from the quarterback and we tell our, our running backs this all the time, don't crowd the quarterback. So why don't you want to crowd your quarterback? Because if we have a bad snap and I'm right on top of the quarterback's hands, that's how balls end up on the ground. So 
Our tailbacks are a little bit wider. Their toes are on our, our, our quarterback's heels. And in this drill right here, it's very good for the defense. Okay, the defense is, is working zone read as well off the backside. And so the guy in the gold shorts here is the guy that we're reading. If he's chasing down line of scrimmage, our quarterback should pull this football. If he's upfield past this cone, we're going to hand the ball off. And you can see the track of our tailback on this should go to the guy that's snapping the football and back every time. Every time we're, we're handing the ball off to our tailback, he's always going to keep the ball. If we start right, his ball should be in his right hand, and I'll explain that in a second. So we are reading the guy in the gold shorts. He makes a, a commitment towards the tailback, but he also, okay, in this situation, the quarterback has got to make a decision. Basically, can I beat this guy or not? Defenses, this is a surf technique. This is a technique that a lot of defenses will play right now to defend inside zone read. They're going to shuffle down the line of scrimmage. They're going to surf to try to have the attempt to, to run or to tackle both plays. And this is where our quarterbacks need to be able to carry this play fake out so he doesn't really know who has the football. And you can see the track of our tailback here is flat and then getting the ball back. Quarterback here probably could have a little bit better steps going towards the, the front side guard there. Now I can't get past this for some reason. There we go. Looks like it got a little bit colder out there. The center there's got a little bit thicker jacket on. Our internet's not working with me, it looks like. skip past that so you guys that we we really had three different clips there of some our quarterback pulling the football some our tailback getting the football but for us whenever we are teaching our running backs in this play on inside zone they are always going to end up with the ball past the center okay so if we start right we're always going to bend the ball back and the the key to this is whenever we are blocking inside zone we worry about how to block the backside defender, the black backside safety, whether we're going to option him or block him or RPO him, we're going to make a decision on how to affect the backside safety in every one of these plays. So our tailbacks are always taught when they're crossover and they get the ball, they're bending the ball back. They're always taught the ball to have the ball in their right arm. And the reason we do that is our offensive line, as they come off the line of scrimmage, those guys will always leverage their backside shoulders. So if I come off the line, Okay, and if I come off the line to my right and the ball's going to end back to my left hip, anybody that I attack on the second level, as long as I take his upfield shoulder and the ball can go behind me, I have my job done. So at the second level, we don't necessarily need a big impact. We don't need a big blow at the second level. I need to be athletic enough to be able to leverage my body. And that's one of the tough things to teach and get drilled into your offensive lineman's heads that we don't need to drill the second level. I need to leverage the second level. And so my tailback on this I know that everything protected on the front side of the play, when I receive the ball on the front side of the play, these guys are all leverage. Anything bad is going to happen to my left side. So our off arm is always to the back side so that I have the ability to either defend a defender and or protect the football with my off arm as a tailback. Okay. Front dependent for our reads, uh, whether we're seeing an odd front or an even front, our, our, our our reads off the back side are going to change a little bit, and we reads off the front side are going to change a little bit. I always start on the on a combo. So if we're going to see a combination block, okay, a combo block means that two guys are going to come together to block like a three technique, and they're going to block that three technique until they get to their linebackers. So that's what we call a combo block. Okay. So the first defensive lineman on the front side of the center. So the first guy past the center is the guy that we're always going to be reading. So if we have a three or a five wherever that combination block is going to happen. That's where my tailback step is going to be. That's where my quarterback step is going to be. That's where our front side read is. And then everything will end up bending back behind, set, uh, behind that. And we're going to feel the backside and where the secondary read is coming from. That is uh, 
We'll get into that as we get a little bit more film, but again, we're always going to worry on inside zone to make sure that we're going to uh, secure the backside safety. All right, blocking technique for our guys up front. We're going to gain ground on our first step, meaning that if I have, if I'm going to block this monitor right, near, right here and I'm a, I'm a front side guard, my first step is going to be at him. It's not going to be lateral. We're not going to do this as much, and obviously in film there's times where our guy's going to do that, but we want to make sure we're attacking the down defensive def the defender with my inside arm or my outside arm, and we have two blocks, two guys on one. And so this is how we execute a, a combination block. We're going to uh, deliver a blow with our second step. So I'm going to be one step at the, at the guy, and on my second step, that's where my punch should end up coming into play here. Push the defensive lineman to the second level. So again, front level on this, first level, we're going to impact. We're going to attempt to drive vertically off the football and drive the defender off the football. And then at the second level, really is what's going to happen is I'm going to have my eyes on the second level and make sure that I can uh, leverage my linebacker to be able to have my tailback cut behind off this. So leveraging the front side is a really big important piece that we will drill into our guys and we've been pretty good at that um, at the second level and pretty good at the loop. Is there a chance somebody can help me out with my internet? All right, so while we're, we're hopefully fixing this, when we are scheming for our inside zone, and we're gonna get to this as, and it'll make a little bit more sense as we have some film to be able to break this down. But when we break down a defense, an 11 man defense, the front side safety, when we're blocking inside zone, we never block that guy, he, was, oh, he will always be free. Whoever the backside safety is, and our quarterbacks will know this, us in our offense, we have a, a run system that our quarterback is calling everything at the line of scrimmage. He's calling the play and he has a three number system to be able to do this. So he's gonna tell our, our guys we're running inside zone, we're running inside zone to the right, and then his backside calls, our third number in our system will always tell everybody how we're going to end up back, blocking the backside. So for our offensive linemen, they're always blocking the same people. For our backside guys, they're either blocking the safety they're swiping the defensive end and then we end up RPOing the safety, but somehow, some way, we will dictate how we're gonna block that backside safety to be able to control him. Um, so for us, our, our play action pass stuff that we went over yesterday and our inside zone stuff that we're going over today, our, our core guys, our five or six guys up front, offensive linemen and sometimes including the tight end, where their combination blocks are will not change at all. So yesterday we got into this uh, discussion after play action pass on how we how we call our offense. So talking about our, our third number system, this is tough without a board right now to, to exactly go over how exactly we do this, but we have a, a wing back in our offense. And so he's our J back. So our third number system, our third number in our play call every time will tell him where to end up. So if we have a zero for run inside zone to the right, Two tells us we're running inside zone. Four tells us we're going to the right, and the third number in, in our play call will always tell that guy where to end up. So if he ends up on the front side of the play, it was a 240. If he stays where he was at, it was a 241. And our third number will end up telling him how to block the backside in a two or a six or a five or a four. And so that is the way that we will adjust the backside of our offense. So our quarterbacks know. Okay, I want to run inside zone and the quarterbacks will know I, I want to be able to block the backside and this is how we're going to do it. I think you guys left too early. I got nothing, fellas. Maybe. I don't know, maybe my film will pop up for some reason.
right? Looks like we got a little bit of film here. Maybe it's just a tight angle. Uh, All right, here we go. So, the last bit of film that we had there, we just had one guy snapping the football, and we're just reading one guy on the end line scrimmage. So that's the first drill that we're going to do to be able to, to drill our inside zone. So all the quarterback is doing is reading one guy off the off the line scrimmage. Our next phase that we will take, and we won't do this until probably practice three or four, after we have the technique and my footwork down and my exchange drawn down and we're reading just one guy on the backside line scrimmage, then we're going to move to this. So this is really, we'll take half the defense and half the offensive guys. Receivers are not involved in this. Generally, the defensive guys will cheat and they'll want safeties and corners on this so they can come down and tackle. That is usually the way that this drill will go, but we're, gonna, we're flat out, we're working half of our offense against whomever the defense puts out there. So in this play right here, when we're doing this, anything on the front side, so anything to the quarterback's left as he's standing there is irrelevant. Everything is going to be off the back side. So on this right here, our tailback will be bending the ball back 100% of the time if they pay attention in the drill. So the ball will end up behind. You can see the tailback here does a really good job of hugging the line of scrimmage. So the separation here with the quarterback and the tailback is tight, and I want that running back as tight as he can be to the line of scrimmage. We will get beat on inside zone read a lot of times when the running back will make the cut two to three to four yards behind line scrimmage. So he needs to press the center, and we drill the heck out of that with these guys to be able to bend the ball back. And it's what that does is it creates separation with number 59 here. So even if we hand the ball to number 59 because he's flat-footed and he's playing a surf technique, he has more of, a, of, of a, a gap to be able to defend for the quarterback. So for this, if you look at us up front, we're going to double team, okay, the, the guy in the right tackle here, and you can see our step. Everybody's step is directional in the, in the, in the same spot. We're going to step, and we're going to double team the five technique here to the linebacker on the second level. Key to this play is at the second level that you're not going to chase linebackers. If we already have them leveraged and they're to the, the front side of the play, let them come back to you. And our backside tackle on this does a really good job here being patient and seeing the second level and not going to chase number 56 over the top. He becomes out of the play. We know that the ball will end up bending behind him and that's why, that's what, you know, he's doing a good job right here as far as being coached and understanding the play. We're staying on the first level, create a little bit of separation with our tailback and our quarterback and the ball ends up bending back. So this is the second phase of doing this. So now we have a little bit different front here. Now we have a, a, a 40 front, an even front. We're reading number four off the end. We're gonna carry the double team with number 91 and 43. And again, our guard comes off on this and knows, although he's kind of beat across his front shoulder, it's okay to get beat there because the ball should end up bending back on this. So the quarterback makes a decision on this. 
to pull the football. Why does he pull the football here? Because there's no separation with number four and our backside tackle. There's not a gap there for our tailback to get the ball back. So again, key on this, our quarterbacks and our tailbacks have to be able to carry out play fake. So the tailback on this, okay, he actually does the wrong thing. We're gonna teach our tailbacks on this. If you don't get the ball, then hit the ball front side. And so why do you do that? To be able to pull the end man line scrimmage down a little bit more. So he actually shouldn't bend the ball back when he doesn't have the football. He should hit the ball front side on this to pull number four down even a little bit more. Tough thing on this is, is coaching your quarterbacks the correct <coughs> timing on when to, to, to pull the football. And we'll get in games and we keep handing the ball off because they're using surf technique and the guy in the line of scrimmage will come down, he'll tackle our tailback and tackle our tailback. And then as we come off line of scrimmage, we'll say, all right, at some point you have to pull this and just believe that you're gonna beat the end man line of scrimmage to create that separation, create for him so it's a little bit undecisive on when that, that quarterback has a football there. Okay, questions on that? Questions on technique for our tailbacks, our quarterbacks, our combination blocks? Yep? Uh, the first clip with the head up nose, the center is stepped with his backside foot first? Yes, he, do, he does that to protect his backside shoulder because we want everything going to the front side. So if that, if that, if that nose slips to his backside shoulder, he, has, he doesn't have his job done. Yep, and so that's why we're doing that. So read variations, backside calls to the backside tackle. So a quarterback in our system, as we talked about when, we, when our film was down for a little bit there, our quarterback has a three number system. So he's gonna say 240, and then the, the last number, 241 or 242 or whatever it may be, the tackle will know whether the end man line of scrimmage is being read, he's being blocked by somebody else, okay, or he needs to block him. So we always have backside calls that will, that will from our quarterback as he's in shotgun. So he'll say, blue, 242, Barb. Barb will tell him to block the backside tackle and then everybody else understands the next man outside of that is going to be the guy that we're going to read. When we do that, that'll tell our whole offense if we're gonna RPO, if we're gonna read the end man line scrimmage and how we're blocking him. Perimeter adjustments, okay, that's how we RPO. If we're gonna RPO, so run pass option, those will be some of our perimeter adjustments. If an end man on line scrimmage that we're not reading is folding in and making the play, then we'll come back to be able to RPO a little bit and be able to throw off of that guy. Other per perimeter adjustments can be motions. A slot receiver coming in motion. Those of you guys that watch the Super Bowl, the San Francisco 49ers are really good at this right now, that they always have a jet sweep, they have a fake reverse, they're handing the ball off on reverses, and they're doing the same thing. They're running the exact same run play every time. It's just all of the stuff behind the quarterback that's making secondaries and defensive ends adjust because they don't know who has the football, and we're kind of doing the same thing. And then secondary rotations, as we game plan and we watch a defense move when our fullback moves or our slot receiver moves, so that we don't have to block a backside safety. That's what we're trying to do on all of our uh, secondary rotations as far as our motions. All right, so in this play right here, okay, this is an example right here. Well, we're gonna have a run call, and a run call on this is 251, and as I stated yesterday and a little bit earlier today, a one call is gonna tell our wing position, the guy in the right, Okay, in this stance right off our right tackle, that's our J-back. One call is going to tell him he's not, he's not going anywhere. He's just going to become part of the inside zone. So that tells our quarterback, our quarterback is telling him that I'm going to read the first guy outside of you. So what is that guy doing? If he stands flat-footed, we should hand the ball off. And again, you can see the tailback in this situation does a really good job of hugging the line of scrimmage and creating space there to be able to do that. So does the end man line scrimmage, the guy chasing down line scrimmage here, does he play the tailback? Absolutely, but he makes a mistake by coming too far upfield. He comes too far upfield, we have a crease to be able to hand the football off. So watch the backside J back here, okay, on the right hand side, looks like it's number 32 or number 33. Watch him block number 42. 
and he doesn't crush number 42, but he does a good job just leveraging this guy, understanding where he's coming. If you look at our, our left guard in this situation, again, he does a really good job of understanding leverage. He's going to block number 36 or anybody coming across his face, okay? And he doesn't need to crush this guy. All he does, needs to do is be able to leverage this guy at the second level. So he picks up a twist game there, just understanding anything to my left shoulder, I'm gonna be in a good spot. If he gets across my face, I'm going to be in trouble. <clears throat> All right, so this is a, another backside call that we will make, and we're gonna make this to our J back here on the right hand side of the play and so we're going to make this call so that he goes out and everybody else okay so this is a 250 inside zone to two five is going to be inside zone to the left and then a nine call is going to tell everybody on our offensive line that they're blocking everybody in front of him when he does this he'll make a call to the backside like i said earlier to our backside tight end here that this guy's going to be out so he'll give him an, an out call on this knowing that we're going to read the end man line scrimmage the last play that we just watched, that number 82, who was number 32 on the last play, he blocked the end man line scrimmage like this. So this is just a simple variation so the defense doesn't know who we're always reading. So now we're going to read the end man line scrimmage and block out on the guy that we read last play. Again, our quarterback has freedom to, to really read either side and call it to either side here. So for us, this is a positive play. We got four to five yards. Could a quarterback have pulled this football and run it? Absolutely. But again, this is in our offense. We never want to put a quarterback in a situation that I'm telling you, you have to be the ball carrier. I don't know if he's winded, tired, dinged up, doesn't want to carry the football. This is on him to be able to, to dictate who's getting the football here. All right, so now we have a, a different formation, tight ends on the line scrimmage, but our run calls will remain the same. And again, our quarterback in this situation is going to, to block the backside safety with the tight end. So the guy on the right, on the, on the hash on the right-hand side there, our tight end should release to block him, and the safety on the left on this hash, or the overhand guy, one of those two guys will be unblocked, and we're okay with that. So this will be a 259 call as well. It's the exact same look, except for our tight ends now on line scrimmage. So we're gonna push our combos, and that defensive end obviously got a little bit aggressive onto our tailback there to be able to get the ball to the perimeter. Simple read for our, our, uh, for our QBs here. All right, so this here is, because we ran so much inside zone read, Defenses started to realize that when my running back is on my right or on my left, that now you guys are going to read somebody off the back side. So they would take that defender from the front side and bring him over the top. So now we have in our offense that our, our quarterbacks and our running backs can really exchange responsibilities. So we're still going to run inside zone in this play. So as we look at it, we're still going to run inside zone to the right. Our offensive linemen are going to block to the right and leverage everybody to their backside. But the ball carrier now is on my right-hand side as opposed to coming this way. So now you can see our tailback's footwork here. Our tailback is going to come across our quarterback in this situation. So he's going to slide his alignment up a little bit. Our quarterback shouldn't move very much out of center. And he's going to read the end man line scrimmage now just with the tailback on the other side. So they, if, we, if we pull inside zone, now our, our, our quarterback becomes really where our running back used to be to be able to exchange who's getting the football and who's running it here. So this is the same drill, just exchanging him. And again, on this, I think the key to this is having your quarterback not get too far down the line of scrimmage. He can't shuffle all the way this way to be able to read that defensive end because the block line's blocking this way. So he really wants to receive it, a half shuffle, watching this guy and then get the ball just like the tailback back to the center and bend the ball back and so that's what we're looking for out of this and it just puts 
both edges of the defense in trouble doing this. And so now, again, this is how we'll break this down for these guys. Just half the defense and half the offensive line, and we're going to read the end man line scrimmage. <coughs> Real simple adjustment, you're just exchanging responsibilities and anybody up front on the offensive line, our tight ends, they're not doing anything different. It's just a responsibility for the two guys in the backfield on this. So here's how we're gonna block the perimeter on this. There should be an end-man line scrimmage that we're taking care of. In our offense, we, we drill our, our running or our wide receivers pretty hard on making sure that those guys can block. So same exact thing here. So if you envision our last inside zone read with our tailback on our right, we're going to read the end man line of scrimmage on the right. All we did now is flipped our tailback, and they, we have the exact same play coming for everybody up front. And same premises yesterday that we talked about. We want to make sure our offensive line understand who they're blocking. So on this play right here, our right tackle, number 66, probably could have done a little bit better job leveraging the second level here, but he, he was making sure that he stays on the first level. When we, when we install this, we install it hard and drill it into a hard into our offensive lineman, you have to take care of the first level. The first level is not taken care of, the second level never will be, so we're going to always carry this. And the linebacker spills over the top on this, which, again, we're, we're still getting positive yardage out of this. But you can see the defensive end, on both sides here, these guys don't know who's going to get red on this. And that's the advantage of doing this with being able to flip your quarterback and, and tailback's responsibilities. Any questions on this run play? Same play, different responsibilities. Inside zone to the left for all of our offensive linemen. We're going to read number 95 there. He makes a commitment down, and again, I think your, your quarterback carrying out the play fake is an extremely important thing here. A quarterback at least takes two steps in the line of scrimmage. All he's doing is trying to influence the defensive end enough to come down so our tailback can clear him, which he does. <clears throat> Any questions on that? Just changing who we're reading? both with blocking down their tight end, arcing our tight end, and flipping our tail back. Nobody's responsibilities change at all. Pretty simple. Variations with our, with our slot receivers. So when we talk about blocking the backside safety, so the safety on the left-hand side here, if we're going to run inside zone to the right, we will either block him with arcing, okay? We're going to read him, or we'll read him by running option here. So our slot receiver on the right in this play is going to short motion in. He's going to come behind our quarterback, and now he's going to be, we're blocking him by making him an option guy. So we're going to read the defensive end on the left-hand side. And if he makes, if he's down and commits to our tailback, our quarterback will pull the football, but now we're going to, we're going to work the backside safety with an option on this. So we end up handing the ball off to be able to crease this, but you can watch the backside safety gets outside his hash, which makes him tougher to defend the backside inside zone. So that's another variation. Again, we're running the exact same play. It's simple for your guys up front. All we're doing is working on these motions. And I know we, we showed some clips where we're, we're breaking down our quarterbacks and our tailbacks and how we're reading. Then we add in half the offensive line. We're doing that exact same drill work with our perimeter guys. So we'll have our perimeter guys in this situation, just the quarterback and the slot receivers and we're going to read you know, a coach or a, a defender on the end, and then we're going to pitch off the safety on this. But just a real simple variation here for our offensive line or for our perimeter guys. You can watch our backside tackle here, and this kid was a really good foot, football player for us here, but he's taking care of the backside three technique, coming off to the, to the uh, linebacker in this situation and doing a really good job of this. The tailback in this situation maybe could bend the ball back a little bit more, but ends up finding a crease and getting vertical on this. If you watch the right tackle come off the football, really good job understanding where that linebacker is and that guy should not beat him across his left shoulder. He's trying to leverage him right now. You can see the angle of his body. 
we don't always, and a lot of teams do, we don't always square up the second level. We're trying to position our bodies so that that guy shouldn't beat us back across the face. <coughs> and here's a look at us pitching it. So one thing that we don't want to do, and we kind of do it in this situation, is we don't want to pitch off the same guy that we're reading. So we're going to read the end man line scrimmage, make him commit, and we should make sure that we're around this. And this is you know one clip that we had where the quarterback probably should have hung on to this a few steps longer to be able to impact the safety. The safety ends up coming down and, and in on the play on this. But same play, just a variation where we pull the football and end up pitching it. And again, this is all perimeter work that we will do quite a bit to, to be able to uh, dictate the backside safety. Tight end and H-back play. So our H-back motion, this is a guy that on, or just off the line of scrimmage that's going to be off our tackles. He's going to dictate secondary role. He's going to get in position for success. Again, no different than our secondary or our offense lineman at the second level. We're going to teach those guys where they need to leverage every single play and set up inside future plays, outside zone, power, and some of the play action pass that we did yesterday. So every one of these plays in our offense should mirror one another so that we have something set up off of the other one. Um, very who our read player is, we've covered some of that. Nowhere you can't get beat. Can't get beat to your backside shoulder as, a, as an offensive lineman. Get in position for success. Talked about that, that we're not gonna score up at the second level the majority of the time. Our offensive linemen are gonna turn their shoulders so the ball ends up back behind them. And again, we're setting up future play for, for our tight ends uh, as well. So we have uh, a couple different variations here for our, our tight ends and what we're doing. If we're under center, our backside variation is either we're gonna carry out a boot fake, so we're gonna hand the ball off and boot with our quarterbacks to be able to affect the defensive end, or we're gonna swipe the backside. Swiping the backside meaning he's flat down line scrimmage, he's gonna impact this with his inside foot up and be able to swipe the defensive end that's on the left hand side here. Tailback, quarterback, don't have any different responsibility. The tailback here does a really good job of hugging the line of scrimmage before he's bending the ball back. And so now, when we're under center, nothing's different for our guys up front. Our crease is the exact same thing for the, for the tailback. We're just changing what we're doing with our J-back here, and our J-back here does a pretty good job of creating some separation and gap off the backside. Same play. A little bit different, uh, different style, obviously, we're under center in that situation. <coughs> All right, so the majority of the time, we're attempting to work the backside safety and make sure that the safety on the left-hand side here is blocked. This is a situation that, like on first down, which it is here, if we're first and 10 and we have a high safety that we think we can get four to eight, six to seven yards, before he makes a tackle, we'll run on that guy all day long. Most of the time, if we're gonna block him, arc to him, RPO him, those guys are within five or six yards of line scrimmage at the snap. And again, this guy ends up, well, he ends up missing the tackle, but he ends up at least six, seven yards deep by the time we get to him. Same run play, same leverage. You can see our backside left tackle doing a really good job here, not being too aggressive. He's patient off the backside, He's leveraging this guy in the right way along with his left guard. Those guys were those guys work together really well. You can see our center on this kind of slow plays the nose, letting that guy work across his face. If you guys have questions on blocking schemes on this stuff a little bit more in depth, just let me know, raise your hand. Alright, so this was a play that this safety had fit this, the guy right where the arrow is here, this safety had fit this outside like three plays in a row. So we told our quarterback, get under center and just let that guy go off the edge knowing we're gonna hand the ball off and hopefully we can, we can increase the defensive end. The defensive end had been uh, crashing relatively hard. Our J-back knew this. If we could get him kicked, we had a shot to beat him inside, which we ended up doing. So the safety misfit this based on this. Same play different way to be able to work the backside combination. Any questions on that as far as backside swipes by our J-back? 
All right, so now, okay, in our offense, our, our J back off the backside is arced. He stayed where he's at. He's swiped and blocked the defensive end. And if we have a six call, and again, our quarterback is making this call, he's going to fake swipe, bypass, and then block the backside safety. So he's doing all four of those with the same run play happening up front. So all, again, all we're doing is a little bit of window dressing from the perimeter end of things. And it's what we're doing. Now we're reading the defensive end. The play call for the offensive line is the same. And the, the J back coming around here should be responsible for the safety that he ends up blocking. So the quarterback in this situation is reading the defensive end just like he would if the J-back was on his side and he's arcing. We're doing the exact same thing. So the, you know, to break this down, again, our tight ends coach is with these J-backs a lot. A third of the time, usually he's working on pass concepts. A third of the time, he's working combination blocks where me and the offensive line are blocking together. And then a third of the time, in practice and in individual drill work, He's doing this all on his own, okay, and just calling out 246. And so those guys know where to motion, and they're just bypassing a cone. And then he'll say 242. He'll stop on the cone, and then he'll say 241. He's not motioning. So it's an easy way to dictate what the defense is doing with one guy moving on your offense and nobody else. As you can tell, for us, you know, we, we recruit quarterbacks that can run exclusively. If a kid can't run for us at the quarterback position, we're not going to ever recruit them. We want kids that can move their feet and be able to make, make plays for us on the perimeter. A little bit different formation. Jay back doing the exact same thing. We're going to read the guy on the left off of our left tackle's uh, left hip, and then our Jay back should come around and block the guy in the perimeter here. Their eyes need to be good. He needs to, again, he knew how to leverage this. He knew the ball's gonna get outside if this thing ends up getting pulled and does a really good job letting that play come back to him. Left tackle does a great job here coming off the football. Three technique works away. Inside linebacker wants the ball in the front side gap. He'll just let him stay there and let him bend back to him. Questions on inside zone. It's extremely important for us that during the game we have the ability to adjust the backside and how we're blocking it through RPOs, through swipes, through arcing our tight ends. And so for us, we know this inside and out. We know how to adjust it. And if the backside is not happening, we know that we can do something different through receiver motions or J-backs or not putting anybody back there to be able to dictate kind of what the defense is doing. Uh, before we get into questions, um, I'm going to stay here for questions. I'm not going to another room, so if anybody has questions after that, we'll shoot. Our team is coming uh, to these three cities uh, in, in May uh, up until the 17th. We're gonna, I believe we're going to scrimmage Prague and in Munich. If you guys are in the area, we'd love to have you guys join us maybe for the day or whatever. Uh, we're excited to come for the week. Thank you guys. I appreciate it.